this is the final case uh, uh, and i want everyone to take you into the icu through this case imagine virtually you are in icu so at, you are managing a 2 year old patient with severe pneumonia who is being ventilated and suddenly in the night nurse call you that uh, sir the child has suddenly deteriorated and not maintaining saturation very 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 common scenario so what what would you do a patient on ventilator and now suddenly desaturated i hope vikram you are seeing the answers they are appearing like uh, one after the other so fast that i don't have time to read uh the most uh, common answer it is given as dope so what okay i hope everybody knows the full form of dopes that is the displacement of tube obstruction pneumothorax and equipment failure and finally s is also there in the dopes that is a sedation problem so this is a acronym dopes d o p e s again repeating displacement of tube obstruction pneumothorax equipment failure and s stands for sedation problem dr vikram absolutely so each one of you have uh, write the right answer so it is dope uh, classically described in past textbook also i have added s also in that which means sedation problem sometimes they can be asynchrony so there can be displacement of tube there can be obstruction by the patient secretion there can be a muco plug mucus plug there can be pneumothorax or there can be equipment failure when we say equipment failure just carefully examine everything right from the patient head to the oxygen port sometimes there can be just kinked tubes sometimes the, there can be loose connection some wire may be detached sometimes there can be a problem from the uh, central oxygen supply sometimes there can be a huge precipitations or the water collection in the tubing all these are part of equipment failure just check these things very quickly in 2 minutes just find out these causes of dopes uh, if your patient is desaturating on a ventilator yeah so what are the salient points that one should remember while caring for ventilated children so every ventilated patient should have their head and elevations otherwise contraindicated if not otherwise contraindicated so they should have their head and elevation to 30 degree uh maintaining the potency of airway so you have to routinely suction them you just cannot put the patient on ventilator and just forget about it you have to maintain the potency of the now the patient is dependent on ventilator so you have to maintain the potency of the airway frequent position change sometimes this is uh being missed out in icus so we do not frequently change the position so patient patient will develop bed sores patient will have fluid collections in the lung if we do not do adequate physiotherapy and keep not change their positions on a regular basis so these are the things which we have to do and obviously we have to monitor them regularly monitor them okay so uh what are the common mistakes uh made during ventilation of these children so i will start from the beginning so once uh, right from the point where you intubate a patient the first common mistakes which i have observed so far is not preparing in advance See your preparation should be good enough. You you should not be searching for it. You you should not be searching for suction catheter. You should not be ordering sister sister. Where is my adrenaline? Where is the mask? Where is the adequate size mask? You have to prepare everything in advance when you are planning to intubate. The medication should be bedside. You have a helping hand. You have a nurse standing at right at the patient end, and you have all the equipments of all the required needed sizes. You may have you should have a correct size. It you should have a uh it is size less than what is uh, uh you have calculated for patient sometimes the airway may be narrowed and you are not able to bypass that airway so all the equipment should be ready your preparation should be good enough first thing second thing in the ventilation not ventilating as per the disease condition see ventilation is also a very individualized approach you have to consider the patient's disease status whether he is having a obstructive kind of disease where you have to keep a very low expiratory time or very high expiratory time for these patients and very low type of peep so what what is the disease condition i am am i dealing with ards kind of situation am i dealing with bronchiolitis kind of condition am i dealing with normal lungs sometimes you just intubate because of the cns cause so lungs are absolutely fine so what what is the condition i am dealing with then one of the common thing which is missed out not using adequate humidification humidification is an integral part of ventilation no patient should be ventilated without adequate humidification you may either use a normal humidifier or you can use hme filters which are available 
but nonetheless humidification has to be provided see in ventilation you are bypassing the normal uh, respiratory tract normally our sinuses our nasal mucosa they humidify they warm the air which we are breathing in try to take breath from your mouth just take 10 breaths from your mouth and you will feel how how dry it gets so you cannot push in dry air into the patients you have to humidify not giving enough sedation and analgesia these tubes these cannulas is are causing enough pain pain to the patient you have to give them adequate amount of analgesia then when you are giving them sedation not giving them sedation holiday is another uh, major mistake you every day when you are taking rounds you have to switch off that sedation you have to assess your patient now how are the respiratory effort without those sedation so every day it is recommended for one to two hour you have to give their sedation holiday not doing chest physiotherapy in right amount right you have to give chest physiotherapy to the patient those who are having pneumonia having collapse having consolidation and finally not having a plan for extubation it's not that just patient come to you you intubated the patient and that now you don't know what to, what is to be done uh if i may give you an example you uh those who are into mythology there is a one very good warrior in the mahabharata abhimanyu only problem with that guy was that he was the only one apart from arjun who know how to enter the only problem was he didn't know how to come out of that chakru so if you don't have a plan how will you, how are you going to extubate your patient maybe 3 day later 4 day later 15 day later but if you don't have a plan for extubation then there is no use of putting that patient on ventilator right so these are the common things which one must keep in mind while ventilating a patient thank you dr vikram for the convenience of the students i have already written down these points in the chat box uh, dr asha says the voice is reduced so i am coming close to my mic I request uh, dr vikram also to come close to the closer to the mic so that we have a normal uh, message going uh, i think we just are into the last leg of our today's chat show last 10 minutes and we have some good uh, pointers and um, uh, Uh, spotter so i'll request dr vikram uh, to go through them uh, quickly yeah please go ahead so, so uh, again again i'm continuing with the same case uh, so this is one of those sleepless nights so you you apply your dope and you find that it tube was blocked now you reintubated the patient but still the patient is not maintaining saturation so you have to take care of two things displacement and uh, it tube blockage again the patient is not maintaining so what 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 is your next step now waiting for your answers in the chat box what will be your next step now we have already reintubated the patient with a fresh et tube so but patient is still not maintaining pneumothorax pneumothorax everybody is uh, saying that there is a pneumothorax okay yeah vikram so a uh, patient was intubated and this was the x ray can anybody points out uh, what is the what is wrong with this x-ray et bronchial intubation et2 inside single lung ventilation a uh, tube right side so okay okay so most of you uh, i have said uh, et tube is going into the main right bronchus so ideally ideally your et tube position should be between the two clavicles medial end right that is an ideal position when you look an x ray right but this is going too deep inside but has it gone into the right main bronchus what should have been the condition of the right lung should have appeared hyper inflated isn't it any 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 other observations you can make out on this x ray apart from the fact that you have correctly noted that et tube is going too deep inside i would like you to focus on two more things here so i think uh one thing is that abdomen is gaseous highly gaseous distension too much of air is there in the abdomen despite the rice tube in position you can see a very good picture of rice tube going inside the abdomen why it is so gaseous and another thing which i want you to notice what is this what is this airway column here so that is that is the problem with the x ray two dimensional x rays that you may not see that whether you have done an esophageal intubation or not but when we did a lateral x ray 
it was an accidental esophageal intubation you can see the trachea trachea is anterior to the esophagus and this tube is going very posteriorly just beside the vertebral column and it is actually going right beneath the uh, beside this esophageal uh, tube so this is an accidental esophageal intubation which may happen sometimes so uh, this patient that is why he was not improving the, all the air was going into the abdomen right so that is a learning point so again you take out this misplaced et you again intubated the child this time your et tube position was confirmed clinically and there was bilateral air entry all equal patient was still hypoxic his saturation was only 85% on 100% fio2 and you decided to send an abg so you get send an abg right so you ask your junior resident to send an abg what is wrong with this abg syringe here i have zoomed out a little bit for you what is wrong can you send this sample for abg yeah everybody is pointing out there are lots of air bubbles there which should not have been there right exactly so what what problem can be there because of the air bubbles erroneous po2 will be there ramya says po2 wrong po2 okay vikram right 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 wrong po2 is a absolutely right answer but will it be a higher po2 or a lower po2 uh, everybody says higher yeah so I, most of the time it is a uh, higher po2 but it depends upon what is the po2 in your blood right so if the po2 in blood is higher than your uh, atmospheric uh, uh, po2 then the oxygen will move from blood to that side to air column right and if the po2 is more in the air column then the oxygen will come from the uh, air column to the blood so it can go either way it depends upon how much is the po2 is there in the blood so it is to be highly discouraged you remove you make sure that all the air bubbles are removed so you instruct your pg again you send the right abg and this is how it comes up with the new abg now patient is severely acidotic and what kind of acidosis is this respiratory acidosis respiratory acidosis respiratory acidosis repeated 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 10 times so far okay <laughs> so we believe uh, it is respiratory acidosis yes, very obvious so pco2 is very very high it is 155 ph is 6.956 so it is clear cut respiratory acidosis so what can be the cause we are dealing with the same patient what can cause severe respiratory acidosis in that patient you have just intubated the patient is not maintaining saturation again you confirm the position uh, bilateral air entry was equal what can lead to such amount of acidosis in that patient it is respiratory acidosis you can read the answers in the chat box yeah right so whenever a patient who is getting ventilated and so severe respiratory acidosis high pco2 level you should think of two things one is et tube is blocked second thing is pneumonia these are the two major causes of such high amount of pco2 whenever you get this kind of ps 6.97 7.1 pco2 100 105 150 think of either pneumothorax or a tube block you have just intubated the patient so unlikely to be a tube block but there was a pneumothorax so that is that is how you approach the patient of a ventilated patient you go by your clinical signs you look whether the tube is displaced whether the tube is blocked now this et if you see this is slightly on a, a, a upper side so ideally it should have been pushed 1 cm more inside ideal position of the et is between the two medial end of the clavicles if this goes beneath that it is you are primarily going inside one of the main bronchus so this is a pneumothorax you can see this is the collapsed lung mediastinum has shifted to the right side so right side is appearing hazy and this is the air collection on the right side so okay thank you vikram i think before last two uh, pointers are there three four minutes are there just to remind the student that the third edition of pg textbook is now out and easily available in the market so those uh, who want to purchase it it is easily available online as well as in the various 
book stores and uh, similar kind of uh, i introduced the diginav e module before we started this those who joined late uh, there will be a small presentation of uh, just 3 uh, to 4 minutes after the uh, chat show is over on if those who want to subscribe to the diginav module which will have 100 such kind of sessions video sessions uh, which will demonstrate the clinical signs examination uh, of newborn reflexes and all other lectures uh, which are which which require the presence of a teacher to explain it to you so that diginav or those sessions are complementary to the textbook of pediatrics i won't say they would substitute the textbook but those which can be you can read and you can understand we are not replicating them we are not duplicating them only those uh, like dr vikram bhaskar has given a very excellent uh, presentation on uh, fluid therapy so that will be uh, dr vikram bhaskar will has a session in the digital module on fluid therapy as well so last two uh, case scenario vikram quickly yes just a quick spotters this this uh, venous blood shows Uh, interpretation of this bbg uh i'm sorry the picture is slightly blurred but i think still uh figures can be make out yeah yeah we can read it ph is 7.081 pco2 32.9 po2 71.8 basically base excess minus 19.2 bicarbonate 9.6 sodium 143 potassium 7.3 calcium 1.01 metabolic acidosis metabolic acidosis are the main answers yeah okay right. so, yep so this is a metabolic acidosis your bicarbonate level is going down so it is clearly metabolic acidosis we are also expected to calculate whether the compensation is adequate or not so you can read those formulas i think but uh, the second step always is you look for the compensation whether the body is compensating enough or not so two ecg strips for you Yep. So a very classical ECG pattern. If you can identify what is this? BF, BT, torsal de point is torsal de point is torsal de point is VF. Vikram sir, back to you. Yeah. So this is this is torsal de point is. Some of you say it's VT. So this I will agree that this half will appear as uh, ventricular tachycardia. There is a sine wave pattern. But if you see the whole rhythm, it appears that somebody has twisted the axis uh, along its axis. So this is torsed is D point is classically seen in severe magnesium deficiency. So classical ECG of torsed is D point is. So this is the final ECG for you, and you can identify the rhythm. I think this is simple. We should have answer right away. VT VT monomorphic VT 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 went back. went mono vt vt okay vikram excellent so this is this is ventricular tachycardia so you know this is this is the uh, qrs complexes are wide there is no p wave you just get a sine wave kind of pattern so this is a tachycardia which is arising from the ventricular itself so it's a ventricular tachycardia so for wide complex tachycardia you usually have only one differential ventricular tachycardia for narrow complex tachycardia you have choice between sinus tachycardia and psvt which we have already discussed So that is how you approach the tachycardia as in basis of ECGs. So thank you, Dr. Vikram. You can stop sharing. I thank you very much, and we had a wonderful session today with Dr. Vikram Bhaskar, and we discussed the entry cases of critical care. Not too complicated things were there. I think we discussed very simple things, and what are the common mistakes that the students can make.